This is my review of the IBM ThinkPad 765D. This is the last of the flip keyboard ThinkPads. And as you can see, the keyboard can come up and come down. Uh, subsequently, there was also a butterfly keyboard model, which is quite unusual. This uh, specimen that I picked up uh, is in wonderful, almost near perfect shape. Let me just show you a bit of bits and pieces. As always, the IBM had that rubbery surface layer, and that degrades with time. So these think pads are always a little bit sticky. If you look at the rear and the back here, you can see that there are the standard docking and proprietary floppy drive connectors. VGA out, parallel, and serial. It uses a very unusual four pin um, uh, charging cable uh, or adapter. And luckily, my universal adapter kit that I got from Amazon has all of that uh, adapter, including this one, so I can use my generic adapter with it. On the bottom, it's pretty uniform. There's nothing special with it there. It looks like it came with. Windows 95 originally, and then on the side you'll see that there is two PCMCIA slots, a PS2 connector, and then as we rotate through, it's, this one comes with a um, CD drive six times. It does not read CDRWs on this model, only CDRs. And then on this side you have audio in out. You have a modem connector which is deprecated really and um, the power switch now opening up the unit let me just plug it in this one has had the previous owner attempt to refurbish the battery so that's very interesting to open up the unit you pull forward uh, unlatches the keyboard module and there you go and uh, you can have it by default pop up this keyboard. It's interesting though because as you can see it does have a percentage battery charge adapter and it's got this cute little LCD display. Please note this is the volume slider and hidden underneath here is the contrast or brightness slider. This is a wonderful TFT model so it's XGA TFT which is 13.3 inch 12 1024 by 768, I believe, and it's just a beautiful uh, monitor to look at. Should be, I mean, they cost about six thousand dollars when they were new. Now, it's very interesting. IBM had a quick open system. The side latches here, pull forward. The side latches here, pull forward to uh, open up the keyboard, but push forward to op unlatch it from the base so let me show you what I mean you push forward and here let me pop that back down and look at that you have access to the internals right away and this allows for a quick swap of the batteries I presume in fact this model if you can find it has a uh, ThinkPad multi uh, use slot here it could store a battery a second hard drive it could also store a secondary battery this is the primary battery, which is lithium ion. And I can see that the previous owner actually popped open this battery and replaced it with some uh, lithium ion packs that he soldered in, which is a bit dicey. I tried to get this working with a compact flash card. And I'm afraid to say that my particular model has a supervisor pass password on it. Now, supervisor passwords on ThinkPad, old ThinkPads can be bypassed, but you actually need to do some soldering into the chips. and I honestly have too many old laptops for me to uh, service this one. But if someone wants to give a go, uh, they should probably be able to do that. Having said that, it will boot into the stock hard drive for a problem. I'll demonstrate that next. But look at this model. It's, I mean, the keyboards are wonderful. You got this cool little slider. It's super clean, great condition, and it's even got dual um, speakers on this. Now, before I move forward, if you own any laptops in this 90, back in the 90s, it's time to get the CMOS batteries out. When you float this up, 
you can disconnect all these um, one two three four five six seven eight nine um, screws and underneath here are two batteries there's a non-rechargeable CMOS battery here at 2032 and then on this side there is actually a um, suspend battery and this suspend battery is nickel metal hydride and in fact let me show you there's a little picture of where the lithium battery backup is and where the nickel metal hydride battery is and nickel metal hydride batteries of this age will leak and will destroy your system so it's time to get them out if you haven't got them out now because of the supervisor password i cannot seem to get an aftermarket um, compact flash or another hard drive working on it. So I'm going to swap in the original in a second. Let me just turn this off. Now, this is the original hard drive, and I'm going to go through this. This model is old enough that it's actually hard to find data on the hard drives and how to service them. So let me just do this. Let me pop this out. There you go. Unfortunately, my compact flash adapter will go back in. So this is the original IBM hard drive. And it's got a little uh, a switch. The trick to this one is that this adapter, um, there are clips along the back here. And there's little um, clips that go into the um, screw slots of the, uh, of the IDE standard ID hard drive inside here 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 and here so if you're just trying to yank out on this uh, metal piece it won't work it'll get stuck here so you have to kind of like use a pry tool and open this up a little bit if you're going to change the hard drive out now to reassemble let me just show you what we're doing here this is a pull out latch there we go, we got the pull out latch installed. A little bit finicky. There you go. And so this connector goes in here. This is the trick. This this took me a while. I had to Google this out. It doesn't seem well documented online anywhere, but once you have that unit pushed in. There you go. All right. Let me get this. Oops. <laughs> Pull back out a bit. Trap the uh, connector. There you go. So let's push that back in there. We we'll get this connector here. And you have to get this connector in before you screw in the top plate. So that's why it's important to do so. Oh, it's got trapped again. Okay. So I need to pop this connector off again. I need to lift this up so I can get this hook in, push down, that'll trap it. Then we get our little connector back on. Make sure you line up, there is one dead hole so that uh, you can only align it in one format so it won't screw it up. And then when it fits in all the way, we put a, oops, there's a screw there. Put a plastic bit on top. It has two screws and this is so old school it actually has a little nut on the bottom side as well why well, use one part when you can use two since I've uh, attempted on this computer to try and replace the hard drive with a SSD or compact flash and if that hasn't worked I am going to put back the original hard drive that came with I have not been brave enough to erase the hard drive and reinstall uh, 
a different version of Windows, if you know if that would be affected or not affected by the uh, Windows password, please put a comment and to let me know or let future users know. And I'm going to just put back in the original labeling. And that is kind of like rubber cement glue on it there. It's interesting. And that is your three terabyte or three gigabyte IBM original hard drive with proprietary dongle connector for the ThinkPads. Now, let me finish up with the tour of the inside. Underneath this section is your RAM chips. It comes with eight megabytes on board. This is a 32 megabyte slot, uh, oh, EDO RAM. There's a second uh, EDO RAM slot that you can use. You have quick release. Just pop it out and lift up. Quick release on the CD-ROM. Quick release for the uh, lithium battery. This should be. Again, this was rebuilt because if you pop open the top, you can see that this guy is, looks like he's uh, soldered together some foam batteries to get the to get it working. I'm pretty sure this isn't the original because it looks like they're more of the standard cylinder cells originally. And uh, I'm not going to do any more of that. Okay. So again, you set, look at the, the industrial design of these early ThinkPads. That's why they sold so many of them. Just pop it in and align and push down. And it's done. Pop that little connector in there. Same thing for the hard drive. You just align it in. And this hard drive has a grounding slot here that matches inside the system. Don't force it. And that's it. That's together. Pop it back down. Power is on. And let's play around with what we have inside. So this was what was protecting me because the BIOS password does not seem to trigger with the, orig the original hard drive in there. And I'm not sure if this is because the original hard drive saves the supervisor passport in there or uh, whether the supervisor passport forces you to recognize the original system, like the original hard drive, and it doesn't allow configuration changes without uh, triggering that password. For, uh, password. If that's the case, theoretically, you should be able to replace it with the exact same type of three gigabyte hard drive and be able to use it, but uh, don't quote me on that. This, uh, someone has installed Windows ME on this, which uh, isn't bad. Um, this system supports a maximum 104 megabytes of RAM, and he did have 104 megabytes running at the time. I have since scavenged one of those 64 megabyte chips for my other system. Let me plug in the PS2 mouse, which may not boot, may not actually run until I reboot the system. There you go. Oh, no, it's, it did pick it up. And so you're asking me, how do you get data on and off the system? That's no floppy drive. The, the CD is not rewritable. It's just a CD-R that can only pick up a, CDR six times. So how do you get the system back in? Well, I've had a lot of luck with these guys. A compact flash adapter. This does not have USB in it, but if I put in the compact flash adapter, it recognizes it in under Windows 98, or in this case, uh, Windows ME. And it shows up as a USB drive, essentially. So pop it in there. Hear that beep that recognizes it. And voila, you have a compact flash that I can get data on enough. And look at the screen. I mean, geez, I mean, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit for this. And this screen is just beautiful. I mean, I, I, I mean, for that era, you're getting such clarity and uh, the contrast is nice. When it first came, it was turned all the way down. I thought it was broken. 
because uh, I was looking for software controls and I couldn't see that there's a very hidden black switch here at the bottom. But um, uh, there's limited, mainly this is a DOS gaming machine. And so unfortunately, they installed Windows ME. I'm not brave enough to install or have enough time to reinstall Windows 98, which I may end up doing because if I get get 98 running, then this system is like uh, golden. Um, but you have that. Um, it comes with a pre-installed IBM utilities. Uh, one thing of note is that the system is using a M wave. It's a audio digital signal processor audio card, which is not fully like um, OPL or AdLib compatible. So sound works fine in Windows, but can be an issue with some older DOS games. But again, look at the quality of that screen. You read and and the viewing angles are actually really impressive too, which you know you just don't see it that much with that era of um, dual scan system. So you have a system here. And this is only for 40 megabytes of RAM, so it's actually doing pretty good. Um, when it was uh, running 104 megabytes of RAM, it, it actually didn't have any of these slowdowns. So you can see Windows ME would be perfectly fine on that amount of RAM. And at 40 megabytes, you can see it chugging a little bit there. Now, the one thing I really hate about Windows ME, it doesn't allow you to jump back into DOS. You have to do a hack in order to get into DOS mode or something equivalent because you hid it behind layers and what have you. So, I mean, that is uh, more than a little bit annoying. But otherwise, this is my review of the uh, IBM ThinkPad 765D, especially with the hard drive issues. I will finish off by showing you uh, the uh, supervisor password problem and there are ways to bypass it but my understanding is that it requires soldering and again it seems like more work than it's worth if I'm not a uh, primary legacy ThinkPad guy I have a whole bunch of Toshiba laptops of that type era so when booting up you just hit the F1 key or escape key I believe And there you go. It's asking for a supervisor password. But if I type, I don't know what the password is. You get three attempts and it locks you up. Now, to just get in, you just press enter and it will allow you access to the read configuration of it. And so you can see that it's a Pentium 166 MS, MMX processor. Um, when I, I, I'm not allowed to change the startup disk. I'm not a change, allowed to change the startup password you can run tests let's see what we can do with config you can see what the memory is like and you can take a look at the system board bios information so it does allow you to read information but there, you know there's not much you could do with the BIOSes in this era anyways but the most important thing is with the password i'm not being allowed to change the startup disk which is why you have to use with this particular um, hard drive. I do wonder if it allows, allows me to install a different operating system though, which hmm, let me try. Okay, that's it and thank you very much for watching.